What's up guys, today we'll be going over the new exotic linear fusion rifle called the Arbalis from this event and I'll be talking about how to get it quickly then also be breaking down the damage of it and all that good stuff in both PvP and PvE and be talking about how good I think it is in both activities. If you already have the weapon or don't need to know how to get the weapon, go ahead and skip to the time on the screen right now. So to get this weapon you have to do this triumph right here which is also to complete seven of the other triumphs. So we pick the seven easiest ones which the first one is right here which is complete 50 branches in the forest which is pretty easy said done. The next one is generate orbs in a strike. So we use the pyramidian on this part of the strike where you can just clear out this entire area then wipe and just do it over and over again. And what it means by orbs in this area is to get headshots and get the event orbs, not masterwork orbs, not super orbs, but those ones. And as you see, the second triumph here is also the same thing, but in the forest, which you can do while doing the 50 branches, which was the first triumph. So that's easy to do at the same time. Next one is the three bosses in one run of the forest, which once again, once you're done with 50 branches, go ahead and do that. Pretty easy to kill three bosses. Next triumph is to kill, I believe it was 150 enemies with supers in any activity during the event, which once again, while you're clearing the 50 branches, that's pretty easy too. Just use a, just use a good roaming super or even Nova Bomb and you should be able to get that pretty easily. Next one is land grenade final blows and crucible game of strikes. So once again, we loaded up this time the Pyramidian Nightfall version and put on Grenadier, which made it very easy to get our grenades very quickly, especially with the tonic grenade buff. Then also made the grenades very strong. So we got that in literally minutes doing the Nightfall of Pyramidian farm just like I showed before. Then the final one is land melee final blows in the forest, which once again, while we're doing 50 branches, go ahead and farm that one out too. So that's how I farmed out my seven triumphs very quickly. And it should take roughly three to five hours, depending on if you have a fire team or not, and how fast you can farm out some of those things. So let's start talking about the weapon itself. It's exotic perk compounding force, fire slug that causes massive damage to elemental shields. Then it's second perk, disruption break, which is the old EPSMG perk, where when you break a shield, it buffs kinetic damage to that target for a brief period of time. And since this weapon is a kinetic weapon, it's on buff its own damage. So let's go ahead and begin breaking down this weapon. So it's all about breaking shields as you see on this wizard with a solar shield. It just goes right through it, takes on the shield in one shot. Then once the shield is broken, it also does increase damage because of disruption break. And as you see without disruption break, it hits 4718. So that perk itself is a 50% buff to the damage of the weapon, but only when you break the shield of the enemy first. Also, I went ahead and tested how long this perk lasts once you break the shield and with this AR shooting and I noticed it drops off roughly around the 5 second mark. So it's a 50% buff for 5 seconds once you break the shield. Now back over to the Ogre. On headshots it hits 47.18 and on body shots it hits 18.85. So that's a 2.5x crit modifier which means it's very important to hit headshots with this weapon just like a sniper rifle. Now testing the rate of fire shooting off 10 shots with this weapon including charge time. It's going to take quite a while, and it's roughly 1 second per shot exactly, which makes the math pretty easy. So for all 10 shots, it took just under 10 seconds, which means the DPS of a body shot with this weapon is 1,888, with a headshot 4,727, then with the perk proc disruption break 7,089, but that's only for 5 seconds after you break a shield of the enemy you're shooting, so not very often. Now look at the ammo economy of this weapon with no reserves that hold 17, with 1 reserve perk it now holds 19. Then with two reserve perks, which is the max, it now holds only 20, which isn't that much of a jump from just one reserve. So if you want to use a reserve, I just say one. Now looking at scavenger perks without any scavengers, you pick up five per box. Then with one scavenger, you get seven. Then once again, with two scavenger perks, you now get eight per box. So once again, one scavenger gives you two more and the second one only gives you one more. So probably only use one scavenger. So this gun's damage output really isn't that great for a special weapon. So where could this thing be good in PvE in the game? Well, my first guess was maybe with match game and nightfalls, since that limits your ability to break shields with off element weapons. Maybe this weapon would be the key for match game and nightfalls. Well, since match game works in a way that only matching elements break shields efficiently, this doesn't do anything. So it's pretty much the same as shooting an off element shield. So that didn't work. So maybe it'll be good in things with Prism like the Reckoning or some uh, Heroic Adventures. Because whenever you're on the wrong element for Prism, your weapon does a lot less damage. And since this is a kinetic weapon, obviously you don't have to worry about that. So it'll be doing its normal damage at all times. And that's definitely true. But at the same time, if you really struggle in Prism, you can make sure to have your subclass, your energy weapon, and your power weapon to be three different elements. That way you have one for everything or even coordinate with your teammates and make sure you have one power weapon of each element 
or one subclass of each element. That way you guys always have something good for every single 30 second rotation of Prism. So I don't think locking your exotic to a bad linear fusion rifle is the way to handle that situation. Now looking at PvP in private match, testing the damage of this weapon, headshots hits 414. Then a body shot hits for 166. So pretty much if you body shot anything, anything in the game, recluse a hand cannon will finish it off. Then with scavengers, without any, you get one per box. Then with one scavenger, you get two. Then with two scavengers, you're going to end up getting three. So it's one less per box than you would get with a fusion, shotgun, or sniper. So they definitely don't want you having all kinds of ammo in PvP. So I end up playing like a game and a half with this thing in PvP. First thing I like to say is if you've been following my PvP videos recently, my wrist has been hurting, plus I got a new mouse recently. So A, I haven't been trying to play that much PvP, give my wrist a little bit of a break, try to let it heal up a little bit. And also, I'm not used to my new mouse yet because I haven't been playing for a reason I just said. So excuse some bad aim at times. But overall, in my limited time playing, I felt like the hitbox of this weapon is very similar to that of a sniper so they definitely learned from queen breaker and made sure to make it not like absolutely broken where you can like not even aim at them and still get a headshot you really have to be aiming at their head to actually hit a headshot with this weapon and on pc with no aim assist where it slows down your aim near their body it felt very hard to use it felt like a sniper rifle with you know obviously a way lower zoom scope with a charge time though so it definitely did not feel that good on pc and it definitely is not broken on PC, I can tell you that for a fact. But you guys are going to have to let me know what you guys think about it on console. Because I can imagine aim assist would obviously help with this gun a lot. But overall it feels like its hitbox is pretty much the same as the sniper. So you really have to be aiming pretty well to actually get the kill. So overall to me it just felt like a sniper with a charge time. Which doesn't result in a good playing experience in my opinion. But as you see in these clips, as I got more used to the weapon, I started getting more headshots, obviously chaining a few headshots back to back and stuff like that. And that's only in one game of learning the weapon. So I'm definitely looking forward to making a montage with this weapon because obviously sniping is my type of thing and that's pretty much what this is. So once I get around to making that video, my opinion on it in PvP will obviously be a little bit more developed and I'll have a much more clear idea of how good it is on PC. But you guys are going to have to let me know what you guys think about console because obviously it doesn't translate one to one. So overall in PvE, I think it does what it's trying to do pretty well. It pretty much takes down any shield in the game in one shot. Then once you break the shield, it does the DPS of like a shotgun or a sniper. So I guess if that's what it was made for, it does that well. But I don't think you should be forced to break a shield just to get the DPS of the weapon close to that of a shotgun and sniper. Because in all of the other situations in the game where you're not going to be breaking a shield or you're not going to be shooting a boss that has a shield, you're pretty much locking in your exotic slot for... A special weapon that does the DPS of like a good primary maybe. So in my opinion I can't really see that many spots in the game where I would be willing to give up an exotic power weapon just to have a lackluster linear fusion rifle that is good at breaking shields and good for five seconds after the shield is broken. In that exact same situation where this scene is good it's not like a coil, thunderlord, 1000 voices or whatever you name it. It's not like that's not going to be able to break the shield anyways. It's not like we're playing Division or Borderlands out here where breaking shields actually requires like a lot of damage. You break shields with power weapons in like negative one second anyways. So overall, my opinion in PvE, I don't see myself using this weapon pretty much at all. Anyways, let me know what you think about this weapon in both PvE and PvP. Do you like it? Do you agree with what I said so far? And also, what do you guys think about this gun in PvP on console? I know PvP is a big mess right now with the tonics and whatnot, but let me know what you think. Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.